among, uh, within the Belarusian diasporas or any other, it's also, we can say, like a political mm. uh, actions. Uh, so right now, it's not only about what happening with the political parties uh, in Belarus, but also what's happening uh, outside Belarus, but for Belarusian democratic future. That's very important to me. Yes, thank you. But um, uh, we know also, you know, a little bit from previous uh, maybe period in Belarusian uh, history and development that political parties, uh, they very seldom had um, a big membership base. Yeah, they were some of them uh, just the, the, almost like it looked like almost like a club of old friends. But what do you think? Um, is uh, this situation, is it today, it's so hard to communicate uh, for different groups with each other uh, and it's uh, no more those open uh, uh, meeting spaces where people can gather and discuss uh, ideas of uh, political development. How then uh, this can develop and become a factor of uh, pushing forward the change? For, for me, it's a little bit unclear if it's uh, really uh, if there is a, a power in it, you know, in in the political parties in different uh, streams that exist today. Uh, you know, Lana, mm -hmm. uh, in the situation that we have right now in Belarus, it's. Uh impossible mm -hmm. to to make political actions or any kind of meetings or negotiations or uh, mm -hmm. collaboration between different political actors i mean uh, offline and very visual uh, it's not uh, like you have for instance in sweden yeah mm -hmm. that's why sometimes it looks like nothing happened in belarus but that's not true Fortunately for, for all of us, and uh, because of the COVID, we no, right now know this, there is a, a good online platform where you can communicate with uh, your colleagues uh, and partners and so mm -hmm. on. And I know that this kind of collaboration, communication and mm -hmm. other sort of discussions, uh, seminars, workshops, conferences, uh, uh, happening anyway uh, and or with different political actors mm -hmm. uh, and I know for instance that uh, uh, um, Victor Babarika's mm -hmm. uh, team they also uh, um, have a willing and now open to their their party and uh, uh, this everything is uh, anyway continued in different ways as I said before mm -hmm. Uh, among different social groups, believe me, uh, and uh, and I I think uh, uh, that uh, when the situation will be changing, all these uh, groups, all these uh, communities mm -hmm. uh, can do this openly and. Uh, uh, just to look into mm -hmm. each other uh, and making this o offline. Uh, of course, and I do understand this, mm -hmm. uh, after the situation will be changed, uh, this, it will be a uh, quite hard process mm -hmm. because it's, um, it's about power. And we know from the also history of different countries that uh, when the uh, there is a way to democracy on this way, sometimes uh, uh, happening different things because there are different uh, groups with different interests mm -hmm. who can who can and who want to get this mm -hmm. power. Uh, yeah, and I, I believe that it will be anyway a very interesting process uh, because uh, it's also about uh, uh, reforms that we anyway uh, need to have and also it's about different uh, ideologies because we, we have different groups with different ideologies. There are someone who want to have Belarus on this neoliberal way and uh, to, to me as because I am social democrat it's mm -hmm. not a, a good way mm -hmm. and there is another uh, group of experts mm -hmm. uh, who propose more uh, social oriented mm -hmm. uh, uh, reforms mm -hmm. and and so on so on uh, it, it's it, it's anyway as i said before democracy mm -hmm. is the process and the main thing and important thing is that we are already on this uh, way mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, I also, uh, I actually understand and I think it's great that in Belarus there are this also real political movements like you named like social democratic or like other. Uh, because uh, uh, we know that in Ukraine, for example, when there, it's one of the closest maybe examples uh, for us today, there is so many of those political movements made after like one particular person. So I think that the Belarusian political um, uh, climate is actually better because there are like some ideological movements that people can unite uh, independently from persons that are at the lead. And for me, it's also a factor for democracy, for uh, when it will be possible to really develop that way. But now we have actually covered quite many different subjects. Uh, maybe there is something else that you wanted to bring up that we haven't talked about yet. Um, no, actually, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add mm -hmm. what you said. Uh, that's really, yes, I, I can't say maybe it's, it's about better than in Ukraine, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really very mm -hmm. good for us that we mm -hmm. uh, definitely have uh, parties, for instance, like mm -hmm. Social Democratic Party, Kramada, or uh, other parties like uh, Christian Democrats or Liberal Party with their uh, quite long history mm -hmm. from the 90s last uh, century. Uh, from the when we as a Belarusian mm -hmm. state got independence, uh, but of course, and uh, I, I think that after political situation uh, will be changed, we also uh, will get uh, parties with uh, different, maybe not so mm -hmm. ideological um, mm -hmm. direction, maybe like part of one person or, or group of persons, I don't know. It, 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 it's, yeah, we will see, but it's mm -hmm. anyway, as, a, as you said before, mm -hmm. uh, also factor of uh, democratic development, that's mm -hmm. really very good. Yeah. So if we will try to kind of summarize what we have now uh, talked about, can we say that, um, uh, yes, there is a lot of movement in Belarus. It is probably under surface, but there is um, civil society is alive. And maybe it's not in the form of a registered organization, but civil society is so much broader and so, right? It's uh, people taking responsibility for the world where they live. That is the civil society. Then we have a political movement and it's very successful in working uh, with uh, other countries and placing Belarus on the political map simply. Even if the official Belarus today, the regime loyal Belarus is uh, really outside in some kind of a black hole. But um, here we see the future and there is a kind of a mood of hope, if I understand correctly. For sure. Good. No, but uh, thank you very much, Julia. And I think um, we maybe finish on uh, with this. And now I'll just say a few words uh, for our Swedish uh, listeners for how they can get engaged a little bit more specific. Because this question always comes up and it's really, uh, we're very happy in the Swedish civil society movement that there is interest for development in Belarus and the, in the region, Eastern European region as a general. So thank you very much, Julia, for being with us today. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank mm -hmm. you for, for very much for your solidarity. It's really mm -hmm. very important to us to understand that we are not mm -hmm. alone in our fight. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, thank you. So, om ni vill engagera er så går på östgruppen.se. Där hittar ni både kampanjer, material, ni hittar instruktioner hur ni kan skriva brev till politiska fångar och till exempel hälsa Leonid Sudalenka och visa att han är inte bort glömt även om han sitter i fängelse. Men jag vill också tipsa om våra kommande östdagar den 16 och 18 november. Informationer kommer finnas på hemsidan och då brukar vi ha en möjlighet att...